Alors, euh, bonjour, merci d'être ici avec nous aujourd'hui. Um, this presentation is going to be bilingual. I'll be speaking English, but Amélie will be speaking French. Amélie Lucier, uh, conseillère pédagogique uh, uh, pour la CSSMI. Non, le CSSMI maintenant, le service, le centre de services uh, seniorie des Mille-Îles. Alors, uh, aujourd'hui, on va vous présenter um, the course uh, What's Going On in the World, which is ANG 5106 which is an optional course. Now this course, like the, our intention today is not to say this is the course that you have to give, it's just to add on to the other 5106 courses that already exist and it's an alternative. So depending on the types of students that you have, you know, sometimes they, some prefer books, sometimes we have students that prefer uh, to be um, more creative and to be more hands-on this would be a course that would be good for them. So it's not a course that is for all students, but it is a, a course that um, I find very interesting and the students who have done it found, found it interesting too. Now, just to remember 5106 is an optional course. It's a two credit course. Um, and there aren't that many students that do it because it is an optional course of SEC 5. So to start off with, Current events, okay, ANG 5106 is the course's current events. And one of my challenges was how can we get students um, interested in, in, in into current events? And you're like, what? We're adult education. Everybody is interested in current events. <laughs> Wrong answer, okay? So we have many students who um, uh, either on Facebook or Instagram, like if you ask them, what is your, your news feed? Like, where do you get your news from? Most of the time it's social media and unfortunately it's not always the greatest source. So how can we get them interested in, in current events, but on a um, um, municipal level, on a national level, a local, a national level and international level. And 5106 is actually the best course for us to be able to do that. Um, so the inspiration for this course is basically um, the show in French, Infoman, I don't know if you know that show, it's once a week. It's with Jean-René Dufort, and it's his take on what's going on. It could be in the world, it could be what's going on in Montreal, whatever. And he has like this funny way of presenting it, but he does like set the facts straight. And it's very quick, it's just in a half hour. And I said, you know what? That is a program that gets people into, like people who don't necessarily watch the news every day, but they can sit down for half an hour and watch this because it's entertainment at the same time, but it, they're, they're real facts. Like he's actually telling us what's going on. So I said, huh, how could we use something like that and turn it into a course where the students would be creating a, a Foman? And then I said, okay, Jenny, that's a bit too ambitious. So how about we just take it to one current event per week? And that's what I did. So the 5106, it's a 50 hour course. Um, and how I divided it, I said, okay, well, technically let's say they have 10 hours, two hours per day of, of English, 10 hours a week. So the four first weeks, they're doing the course, they're actually learning. And the last week um, is a week that we keep for the actual exam because the actual exam is a bit longer. And I'll discuss it a bit more. Um, towards the end. This course is something that I, I did on Classroom, on Google Classroom. But then when we wanted to export it and to share it with other people, other teachers from other um, um, school boards, we weren't able to export the classroom, right? Because some don't have a Google Classroom. So um, last Thursday, somebody gave me the great idea. Jenny, you know what? You can take their information from your classroom and put it onto a Google site. I'm like, yes. And it's on Monday that I'm presenting, but I did do it. So uh, I'll be able to share with you the Google site with the information. Mind you, please be um, very, 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 uh, I would say um, tolerant or uh, be nice, be gentle because the website isn't the, like as beautiful as I would like it to be, but just focus on the information that's there and how you could reuse it because the whole intention of today is not to necessarily that you take this course and use it as is, but maybe if I could spark some ideas on something that you're already doing with the 5106 or something that you thought of doing with the 5106, 
And then today, maybe you see one or two ideas that you say, hmm, I could do that. I like that. Then good. Our mission will be accomplished for today. So without further ado, let me share my screen with you. So to begin with, so how I did it is I, instead of separating it like in the classroom week per week, I just did like different uh, tabs in the Google site. So the first thing when the, the, the student comes in, what I ask them to do is to listen to, sometimes it's videos, but in this course, it's just a, an audio uh, presentation of what the course is about. So what they need to expect about this course and what is expected of them at the end of this course. So, you know, it's a two credit course, how long it's going to be, what you're going to do, blah, blah, blah. And within that, usually what I have them do is I have them watch the video and afterwards there's a Google form quiz. So it's a quiz. Um, that they either can check mark like what are the competencies that are seen within this course, how many credit does it have and all that. And they just check that and then they send me the Google form. So it, it shows me that they actually watched and they understood what this course is all about. Moving on. So when we go to roadmap, the roadmap is basically um, the course uh, in a nutshell, if you want. So here, when it's on classroom, they can actually like add a check mark when it's done. So the first week, every week I try that they have something to produce, they have something to learn, they have something to practice, and they have something to produce. So in week one, the first part was the introduction, the video that you saw, and then they have some resources um, on how to recognize fake news, and they have an assignment. Then what is a source, what is a credible source, and then they have an assignment, and then a summary, they produce the first summary of a current event. Now you have this, this is like the short version in a nutshell, and if we continue, then you have the links to week one. So let's head on to week one. We have how to recognize uh, fake news. So watch these three videos. I'm sorry, the network here is kind of slow, but there are three different videos, so they watch them. And then they have the excitement on fake news. So right after they watch the sources, most of the sources are either videos, um, some are podcasts and some are articles. And the assignment that they have to hand in is quite simple. So complete the sentences below, fake news is, and I can recognize fake news by checking these five aspects. Boom, that's it. Okay, so it just shows me that they, they, they watch these videos and they're actually thinking, okay, how can I, how can I put this together and, and make sense of it? The next thing, how to find credible sources. So again, they have different videos that they can watch and then they go to how to find credible sources, the assignment. So here there are different questions. So what is the crap? So they have all these already. The assignment is done. Thank you very much. They send it to me. As I said, usually this is on classroom so they can send the assignments automatically. Like they just fill them in and they send them. Here, there'll be some work to do that you actually, they have to send the assignments to you on, on email, but at least you have the info. And then how to write a current events summary. So read the following article below, which is a really nice. It's on WikiHow, but it's very simple and you have different steps. And then you have a note-taking template because we're, I know it's 5106. Um, it's an optional course. They should know by now how to take good notes. Yes. But then again, it's an optional course. So who says that they did all of their English, their other English courses with us? So just to be sure, I thought that it was important for them to, to re, review on how we can take great notes. And I think there's always something that we can learn. So how to create current events. And what I did here is a, a template that I started and that they can complete. Okay. So again, quite simple. Um, fun to do, hopefully, and something that will be useful. Another of my preoccupations for the 5106 was, how can we take this optional course and actually have them do things that will be uh, worth their while and that they can reuse and reinvest outside of class, outside of school, in their real life? So there's a presentation component that we will see in starting week two or three. Okay, so, and to finish off in the first week, then they have their current events summary. So they just learned how to take notes. They learned how to write a summary of current events. And now they read about it. They didn't learn it, but they read about it. And now they're actually getting a chance to put it into practice. Good. 
So that is the summary and that's for week one. Week two, if we move on, there we go. So note taking methods, <clears throat> sorry. So here there are different, uh, many, many sources on note taking. The ones that I found were most interesting. I try to keep the videos um, relatively short so as not to lose them. And also the more concise I find the videos are, the, the better it's, the easier it is for the students to say, aha, yes, I could use that. So they get to choose actually which ones they watch, but I do ask that there's at least one of the videos that is on sketch noting. So you have all of these different videos, all they have to do, they're embedded, all they have to do is click on them. And then at the end, there's the note-taking assignment. So we ask them basically, okay, so the note-taking resources, which one did you choose to watch? After consulting them, okay, what are some helpful hints that you remember? And then what we ask them to do is choose one note-taking method that seems helpful and write them below. And then you choose one that you're actually going to use for your first current event. So the first real current, the week one, they're doing a summary of current events. Now week two, they're actually starting their, their real first current event that they're going to present, okay? And we move on. So the current event, again, to give them, um, they don't have to use this template, but I find that when we're starting out, when it's something new that we do, to start with a template is helpful. So what is going on this week? And I ask, so they, they have to shop around. They can't just say, okay, I'm just going to do this current event. I want to make sure that they actually shopped around and check different things that were going on this week. And out of, let's say those five ones, which one did they choose? Also, um, they will have uh, three weeks actually of current events. So they can choose, it can either be a local, national or international. But what would be interesting is for them to vary from week to week, not always to do just international or just national, that they do one of each. But I'm not going to tell them what week because it depends what's going on. So sometimes it might be local news, might be this week that is really interesting. So I want them to be able to use it then. Um, okay, so use the next, uh, so the sources, what are the facts? So here, what I want you to pay attention to see is that on the one side, you have the facts, the information part, because in 5106, they have to inform, they have to express, and they have to persuade. So when they're taking their notes, why not take my notes that way? from the start. So on the left-hand side, it's the facts, the main facts of the, of the story, if you want. And on the other side is, well, what are their opinions? What are their impressions? How, how did it make them feel? Okay, so they already have that in their note-taking. So afterwards, when it comes time to actually put all of that together, they, your notes are there to, to help you. Again, they don't have to use that template, but I find it, it's helpful. Now here's something that um, I find interesting is the peer feedback. So what's good, what is good about learning about something and not being able to share it? When you just keep it for yourself, eh, you learn, but not that much. When you learn it and then you share it with somebody else, then you're actually getting a chance to learn it twice. So in every, um, in every current event that they do the research and that they, they produce a presentation, they will also get peer feedback. Now, instead of just asking the class to participate, okay, I want your feedback. Again, I figure, well, how about we help them out on what they need to do feedback on? So this is a form that you can easily um, just print out. Um, and you can hand them to the students who participate. It could be the whole class, depending on how big your classes are. Um, it could be with the whole class, or you could maybe choose, you know, okay, hey guys, uh, you know, Bob here just uh, did his current event and he wants to present it. Who's game? Who wants to come in and watch it or listen to it or read it or whatever? So they come together and they give their peer feedback. So the QR code here is how do I give peer feedback? What are the important points? Okay, it's not just, oh, I liked it, oh, it was good, or, oh. okay, what are some points? So here, again, very simple. So what are the things that about your presentation that I really liked? Keep those up. 
Um, what are some points that I think you could improve? It could be the volume of your voice. It could be maybe add more visuals. It could be, okay, different things like that. A question. So maybe there's questions like you explained that, but I have a question that I'd like for you to clarify. And thank you. This is what I've learned. So again, by giving this to the students before the presentation, we're already focusing their brains. They know what they're looking for while they're listening to the presentation. And I say listening to, but again, that's something that I forgot to mention, but the presentations that they do, um, this course was with my students in mind, and I do have students that have very, very high anxiety levels. So presenting in front of a class, that's a big no. And my, my, my goal is not to put them on the spot and make them feel really bad. My goal is how else could they present? How else could they share this information without having to do it in front of people? So they could actually record, they could make a video, they could turn their information into a podcast and just have the class listen to it. They could actually write a blog so they could write it. So they have the choice. Again, um, one of the things that I really love about this course is that students have a choice on what they're going to cover, what information they're going to cover, what sources they're going to use, again, using um, credible sources though, um, how they're going to take their notes, how they're going to present, what presentation tools they're going to use. This all belongs to them, but my job is to equip them with that. So that was week two. We move on to week three. There we go. So they've already tried giving a presentation without us giving them the tools. So they're using the presentation tools that they know, what they've seen before. Um, some it might be already wow, but some it's like, hmm, how could I do this better? So in week three, we're actually, how do you give a good presentation? So again, they have different resources that they can, they can check out. And afterwards, you see there's some videos and one is an article, then presentation skills, outline method. So the outline method, I'm reinvesting what they learned in the note taking, okay? So they, they look at the skills, tips and tricks, and I started it for them, and then they have to continue filling it out. And then they say, hmm, did I use the outline method well? Well, I don't know. Do you want to compare your notes with the model? Click here. And then they just click here and they actually get to see the model of the outline um, method. So the outline and how to answer. Oh, yes. Another part that they have to do. So they have to do the research, find different current events, choose one that they want to present. They have to be able to inform their audience. And they also have to be able to express their feelings, their thoughts, their opinions about the subject. And the good, well, I think the very interesting part is afterwards, they, they have to host a question, an answer and question period. So they have to be able to answer on the spot. So that's the only part that my anxious students um, having the um, question answer period, that might be a little bit more stressful, but it's not like giving a whole presentation. And again, this is was, was based on in real life, when you attend meetings, when you're part of a group, these are things that you will have to do. It could be smaller groups or bigger groups, but you will have to do this at some point in time. So I think this is could be very interesting. Okay, so how to give a good presentation. Again, they have an assignment. So uh, for the current events, here's a template again, another template. And this is the same template that they will have in week three and week four. And they can also use it um, for the part of their exam. So it's like, what are your sources? How do you know these are credible? And the same thing as we were when we were taking notes before. So you have your facts on the one hand and you have your thoughts, opinions, and your feelings on the other. Good. And then we also have the feedback form that you see at the bottom. And I will bring you now to week four. So week one, we, we did the learning on what are like fake news, credible sources, how do I do that? Week two, we did the note taking. Um, and we uh, did uh, the note taking, yes, pretty much. And there was something else. Oh yes, we added the first real current event. The third week, we added on to that by presentation, like what are the different presentation tools that I could use, different ways that I can present. And week four, it's basically, there's no more, learning per se, 
It's just they're taking what they know and they're reusing it. They're reinvesting what they've already seen. So it's the current events. Um, week four, it's the same template that I just showed you. And they also had the feedback form. So those are for the weeks. Then we move on and we have presentation tools because lots of students, if you ask them how they want to present, they'll just present the ways that they've seen before. They don't really think that there are other ways that they can do it. So here are 33 creative present uh, presentation ideas, then how to use PowerPoint, Google Slides tutorial, Anchor, uh, anchor.fm for um, podcasts, amazing site. Um, edit on Chromebook, what are the best videos? So here they have also Book Creator, resources on where do I can find free images, sounds, and video. So they have this, it's accessible to them. They can learn how to use like different sounds, add sounds, sound effects, and their imagination is completely wild when we give them the resources and when we give them a space that they can actually try it out and maybe make mistakes and maybe say, you know what, <laughs> this is really not, and how they can improve it. So giving them feedback, timely feedback, not while they're doing it, but once they've, they've given you a first version, then we give them feedback on how we can improve it. And they love it. They love the fact that they can actually, they're making something, they're creating something that they will share with others, not just with the teacher. So that's the pre presentation tools. Um, there's lots of fun stuff there. And then we have the different resources because sometimes um, this is to listen. Uh, then we have reliable sources like where you can go. And here there's like a whole list of reliable news sources that they can scroll down and, and go check out. Because sometimes some students, even if you give them the, the best prompting possible, they're stuck, they can't find. And there's this last one. And Catherine, I think you're the one who actually shared it with me, which is the Good News Network. Um, and that's fun to get students. Again, my objective is to get them hooked to, to, to what's going on around them, to actually know, to actually pay attention to what's going on. And then we have how to write a summary. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, I believe, oh, there's a, one last thing. Uh, another one is for teachers. I'll let you go there. It's two sources that I found interesting on why we should teach current events and how we could do it. Now it's for K-12 students. It's not for adult ed, but there's lots of stuff that you can reinvest, I find, in our um, teaching. And voila. So Emily, take it away for the exam and the great. OK. Alors, euh, pour ma part, je vais présenter en français. Je vais présenter euh, l'épreuve que Jenny et moi avons créée pour justement le cours Q&A Event, donc le 5106. Euh, les deux équipes d'anglais du CSSMI avaient vraiment le souhait d'offrir ce cours-là. Alors, qui dit offrir un cours, dit aussi avoir le matériel d'évaluation. On avait besoin d'au moins deux épreuves. Malheureusement, les DDE n'étant pas encore publiés, euh, on était un petit peu euh, frileuse à l'idée de développer du matériel. Donc, c'est pour cette raison qu'on a, qu a décidé de, de créer une version unique. Donc, lorsque les DDE vont être publiés et euh, officiels, on, ça devrait être une tâche quand même assez simple là, de venir euh, faire les modifications qui s'imposent. Cela dit, on a quand même respecté les, les grandes lignes directrices qui avaient été nommées euh, dans un après-cours euh, précédent, je pense euh, au mois de février euh, de l'année euh, 2022, même 2021. Alors, bien entendu, dans l'épreuve, on traite vraiment des deux domaines généraux de formation qui sont euh, mentionnés dans le programme, soit les médias et vivre ensemble des citoyennetés. Euh, à travers cette épreuve-là, euh, les compétences transversales qui vont avoir été travaillées en classe, vont, vous allez pouvoir aussi faire des observations concernant ces compétences transversales-là. Euh, on va avoir deux tâches de production, donc une tâche d'écriture qui va venir couvrir euh, la famille de situation euh, et les fonctions langagères, s'informer et informer. Ensuite, ça va être suivi d'une prise de parole, donc pour s'exprimer et persuader. Euh, bien entendu, la mise en situation que Janie va nous lire euh, bientôt, hein, Janie? <rire> Elle va être ouverte, complexe euh, et signifiante. Euh, le sujet euh, de l'épreuve est clair, le destinataire aussi, ainsi que les générations de communication. Et bien entendu, l'élève va devoir euh, se soumettre à une, une période de questions-réponses avec son enseignant et ou l'auteur. Euh, la pondération qui a été euh, proposée euh, par le ministère pour cette épreuve-là, pour la tâche d'écriture, euh, pour la compétence 2, 
euh, on a un 30 euh, Puis ensuite, pour la compétence 3, un autre 30 Et pour la tâche d'interaction orale, donc qui est la tâche 3 de notre épreuve, pour la compétence 2, un 10 qui est octroyé. Et enfin, un 30 pour la partie euh, de l'interaction. Tantôt, je vais pouvoir rapidement vous montrer les grilles. Vous allez voir aussi comment ça a été réparti euh, en fonction des, des différentes composantes. Donc, c'est trois parties. Puis, euh, c'est de la recherche, puis il doit informer, son, son texte décrit, c'est euh, informer. Ensuite de ça, exprimer, puis convaincre les gens, euh, des fois, c'est un call to action dans sa présentation qu'il va faire devant ses collègues. Puis après ça, euh, la troisième partie qui est euh, le... Fait, fait, c'est ça, tu écris en salle d'examen, tu écris l'information. Deuxièmement, tu prépares ta présentation que tu vas faire en avant de tes collègues, tu express and persuade. Puis après ça, tu as aussi la partie de question and, and answer period. That is live. Euh, puis avant que j'oublie, euh, malheureusement, euh, pour des fins de confidentialité, cette partie-là sera pas en, enregistrée. Là, donc, euh, je ne sais pas euh, si c'est possible peut-être de mettre mon adresse courriel euh, dans le chat, euh, s'il vous plaît, Marc, comme ça. Si jamais il y a des questions qui surgissent, euh, juste m'envoyer un courriel. Si jamais vous voulez aussi accéder euh, à cette épreuve-là, euh, aussi m'écrire, puis on mettra nos responsables de sanctions en contact pour que, euh, que l'épreuve soit partagée selon les règles de l'âge. Écoutez, euh, moi, je veux juste dire pour le, le, le site web, ça me fait euh, plaisir. Vous avez dit que c'était généreux, mais ça me fait plaisir. J'aime ça faire ça. Là. Je vous avouerai que c'est un plaisir, sauf qu'il n'est vraiment pas esthétique euh, comme j'aimerais habituellement que ça soit. Puis, euh, il y a peut-être des fonds. Fait que si jamais... Ça vous fait vraiment plaisir que j'ai partagé avec vous. Si vous trouvez des erreurs, s'il vous plaît, me l'écrire, euh, comme ça que je pourrais les corriger. Ça serait, ça, serait ma, ça serait une marque de reconnaissance envers moi de me dire, hey, « Jenny, je pense qu'il y a un petit, euh, une petite coquille ici et là. Ça se peut fort bien parce que j'ai fait ça en deux coups ou sur mon heure de dîner ou pendant une récré. » fait que ça se peut qu'il y ait des choses qui se soient glissées. Je n'ai pas nécessairement euh, revérifié euh, très attentivement. Je voulais être, juste être sûre, oui, de, 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 de pouvoir le partager avec vous ce matin, ben, en fait, cet après-midi. C'est bon. Ben, J'espère que ça l'a spark, que ça l'a allumé des idées, euh, qu'il qu y a des choses, au moins une ou deux, une ou deux, I'll speak English, it's much easier for me. So at least there's like maybe one or two things that you'd like to, to use, to reuse, I say, huh, or maybe I can adapt it or modify it or add it to something that you're already doing. If that, if, if you just use one or two things, well, my mission is accomplished here. That's, that's what I wanted to do is to share for you to actually take something that you find interesting and to make it interesting for our students. Because this is an amazing course of 5106, no matter how you decide to teach it. it it's an amazing course. It's like an open, it's a door opener to, to the world. And most of them, they don't know what's going on. So let's kind of pique their interest too and their curiosity. And hopefully after doing it after four weeks, they'll get hooked and they'll do it even after the course is done. They'll keep on going and, and, and checking out the current events. Okay, so maybe I'm dreaming a bit, but maybe, just maybe it might work. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much um, for being here. Thank you for joining us. I hope uh, that you have fun playing with this and It was my pleasure. Amélie, is there anything else you want to add? Bon, merci euh, merci à, 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 nos, euh, à nos deux helpers du récit. Oui. Merci à Jenny pour ta générosité euh, habituelle et ta créativité. Pour une conseillère pédagogique, c'est du bonbon de travailler avec une équipe comme ça. Donc, euh, on a eu bien du fun à faire l'épreuve aussi. Donc, euh, voilà. Merci. Merci. Le travail d'équipe, c'est ça. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah.